Good morning. Um, my talk is about a, a strategy for fungal name with telomorph uh, and uh, animorph connections with the case of Obelia. So um, actually, several years ago, I asked my students to work on the Obelia with the animal and the telomorph connection. Uh, I have no any idea about the one function and the one name. But now, the facts, the facts are one species with two names for the telomorph animal connections, and uh, one telomorph species connected with more than one anamorphic species. And we also know one species with one sequence. And uh, we also recently, we have a lot of environmental nucleic uh, acid sequence. So for the name of fungus, it includes the genus name and also the species name. So what we should focus, how to deal with or unify the two names and also how to deal with the DNA sequence environment. Uh, this is the database of uh, telomorph uh, and animal collections, and there are one fifth species has one telomorph collected with more than one animal species. So about 10 years ago, and I asked uh, Professor Wen Yin Zhuang, should we have one student work on Obelia? Because she told me that Professor Kov said, don't touch the, the Obelia for the uh, student senses. So, but I work on nematode trapping fungi, and he works on discord mitosis. So he said, okay, we had one student in 10 years ago work on the Obelia. So we found that the species of Obelia most based on morphological characteristics and uh, depend much on the type specimen and uh, also based on the sexual stage morphology. So after work, uh, there are 10 uh, anamorphic genera connected with uh, Obelia. More than 2,000 species already described in Oblia. And uh, uh, there are a number of species of the tenomorph connected with more than one anamorphic species, such as uh, Oblia auricana. There are four anamorphic species. Um, so based on the, the investigation, so the species concept in telemorphic and anamorphic is not equally treated. There are few morphological characters for the obelia. And uh, the nomenclature types is the telemorphic specimen without any information about an animal. So one of my, my colleagues um, complained with me, he said, you don't have a systematics for the anamorphic fungi. But I think anamorphic, fungi, anamorphic and the telomorphic are just a different stage of the life cycle. They also should have a systematics. So um, five years ago, we had another student especially work on the, on the uh, anamorphic and the telomorphic collections based on the culture, isolation, and also the molecular phylogeny. So he studied the four species of the Obelia. Here I just show two of them. One is uh, he collected more than 2,000 fresh Obelia and did the ASCO shooting method to isolate the, the anamorphic. And he also do the morphological uh, identification and also with uh, uh, phylogenetic studies with uh, uh, multi genes. Here's uh, Oblia auricana, and uh, he cannot, at first we try to find more morphological characteristics, but uh, we failed because they are, cannot connect with uh, animal. So, 
And we also do not find any difference with the ASCO spot. They are quite tiny. Here is some anamorph. They are quite different with the different spores. So we did the uh, phenogenic uh, trace, and we found uh, seven different gr groups uh, connected with uh, this species. And the sequence identity between 82 to 100%. And most of the connection with the uh, asobotrys canadoides. Here is another species, Obelia uh, luteo rubella, and uh, here's some uh, telomorphy, and uh, here's anamorphy. So, based on the, the phylogenetic tree, the sequence identity between 78 to 98%. Three different groups uh, connected with the uh, 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 telomorph. They are be belong to three anamorphic genera. So I, I asked the students to make some conclusion, such as the species complex is phenogenetically heterogeneous. So that means the uh, telomorphic species is uh, complex. And uh, anamorphic characteristics are important to define a species of the telomorph. So how to unite the two names? That's uh, our focus in several years ago. And uh, uh, so we think we should ignore dual nomenclature systems, just like I said, anamorph just a, a different stage of the life cycle. So forgot about the telomorph species or an animal species, only recognize fungal species based on the type specimen of the telomorph or animal or both. And then epitype five, the anamorphic characteristics and the DNA sequence from the original place and the host of the telomorph. So species name should follow the law of the priority. Uh, priority. So, based on uh, this uh, uh, thinking, so we uh, treated our uh, uh, fungus uh, about the uh, Obelia uh, auricana. So, as for both the chloridoides uh, and its ITS sequence are uh, resulted from the original place and the host. And actually, it's uh, originally from the Scotland. And uh, then we can assign Oblia uh, Oricana, the animal face, as a And then we can, uh, we can uh, treat other species, just uh, uh, use, uh, uh, treat the, the, the telomorph and the animal uh, as a combination of the two species name as one by dash. So just like this uh, uh, original species, and we can have another Oricana oligospora and Oricana sacrophilum and Oricana unaensis. But I don't know we should say it's a new species or a new combination. So actually this paper already uh, uh, already have that manuscript two years ago, but uh, you know, after you know, the one fungus, one name, we don't know how to treat this kind of things. And uh, I think species, uh, uh, treat the species name is quite easy, but treat the genus is quite difficult. So, obviously, there are 10 anamorphic genera. So, uh, here is a tree uh, based on the, the trapping fungi, and actually those four anamorphic genera, they just base the clade, and uh, the clade is, uh, the clade is also related to the trapping structures. So this, uh, 
those genera are already uh, well accepted. So that means the genus should be the clade deten determined. So we should use the clade to determine the genus. So I think we probably should propose some principles for treat the genus, just like the clade determines the genus, and the morphogenetic uh, clade has a pre-priority. The type species in the clade determines the genus name. That means if the type species in that clade, we should use that genus name. And if no things, probably we should have some, I don't know how to say, monophylogenetic groups as a priority. And also, several people show some of the Google data. So another, probably the reputation or convenience. And uh, that could be a rule for traits the one fungus, one name. So probably we can also just uh, like the uh, nomenclature, uh, we can have some articles or something. So for our fungus, and uh, there's a monophylogenic clade for oblia. So oblia should be the genus name. But for the reputation and the convenience, as is the oldest name. So probably should choose uh, Asobotris as a genus name, not oblia. So other anamorphic genera should be as a subgenus. So John Taylor is going to talk about the uh, environment nucleate acid sequence. So I just, uh, you know, I did a lot of ecological research. Actually, we really need how to identify those sequence. So here's uh, one research we did uh, on the fungal community structures and the uh, Chinese uh, caterpillar fungus. So we, we found, uh, we identified 32 uh, OTOs by couch method and uh, uh, 100, 108 OTOs by couch independent method. But only 13 OTOs, they are overlapped. So actually, the uncultured uh, OTOs can tell more ecological problems, uh, uh, means. So I think all of uh, us know the papers in Nature last year about the crypto mycot, and uh, they actually identified the symptoms based the fish and to identify the cells and also the life cycle. So they can set up the new mycota. So why don't we borrow this tech to make our uh, environment sequence to the cell, to the body, and to the life cycle? Then we can make a, a name, not only based on the sequence, but also based on the, the body and also the life cycle. So finally, many people think the database should play the key role in the one fungus one name. But I think nomenclature is not only the nomenclature. And the species name needs a genus. That means we need a taxonomy. And if we think the clay determines the genus, and obviously we need the phenogeny. So database for one fungus one name is not only the nom nomenclature database. And uh, it should be an integrated database or infrastructure, including phylogeny, taxonomy, except the names. So that's my talk.